Good evening, uh, buenas noches. A very difficult match. We knew that it was going to be tough. We knew that uh, we had to make rotations and we tried to find the best way to utilize the place that we had and then uh, try to endure through the match. Unfortunately, uh, the first half, um, um, we looked a little bit disconnected. Uh, we considered the two goals. And then towards the end of the, the half, we created two very good chances, which we could have capitalized and, and get back into the game. But we went into the locker room um, with a 2-0. Two, two but we felt good about uh, the fact that the last few minutes, we did very well. Then we made some changes. Um, we felt that putting two forwards and putting uh, more of a 10 with Valeri will give us more, have the wing backs higher. So we made a few tactical uh, in moves and, and, and we ended up, you know, having a very, very good, a tremendous second half, uh, not only because we scored the two goals and we were, were, were able to get a very important point in a difficult place, but we played very well in the second half. Um, and uh, the conditions were tough, uh, as always here. Um, very hot, very humid against a team that uh, works very hard. TAP has done a great job to make sure that this team uh, is always uh, hungry to keep on going forward. Um, but for us, uh, this point was very important. All right, we'll start questions off with Caitlin Murray. Gio, you uh, brought the team out in a different formation. You had five defenders in the back. Uh, what were you trying to do there and how do you think that worked? So what we were trying to do, first of all, is that we had no wingers, we had no forwards. Uh, so we have to be creative and we have a lot of defenders and we have a lot of defensive mids. So it is what we felt that could work. Um, but there were some things in the five two, uh, three, or if you want to call it uh, three, four, three, um, that uh, we did not do well in the first half at the beginning. But towards the end, um, we were able to do much better because we were a little more brave in going to pressure a little bit higher. Uh, we found some very good areas to create two very good opportunities that we should have capitalized. So we did very well towards the end. Uh, and then we felt that we needed to make a few uh, adjustments with, uh, as I mentioned before, um, getting Valeri in those packets uh, in the middle that we felt that we needed in order to create better opportunities to put a force on top. So the uh, tactical moves that we made for the second half, I think it, you know, it pay off uh, very well. But the sacrifice of the group, the belief of the group, the guys that came in, um, the, I'm very pleased with the performance uh, in the second half. And even in the first half, it's just that changing a system uh, that we worked a little bit to try to um, come here and perform knowing the players that we had. Uh, overall, it was it was very good um, to be able to get a, a good result. We always want to win, but I think today the tie was, was very important. All right, next we'll go to Paul Danzer. If you just want to check on Saban's health, you took him out late, and also Marvin, how's he doing? Yeah, Marvin, uh, we have to see, was a little bit dizzy um, in halftime. So we decided to pull him off. Um, we didn't want to risk anything. And, and Seba, the same in regards to, he felt a little bit, you know, of something um, in, in the muscle. Um, and as soon as he, he felt something, it was better for us to take him out to make sure that he's okay. And that's why we it was more of a, prevention uh, oriented and anything else. And, and that's why we decided to take him out. All right, next we'll go to Kyle Garcia. Coach, Diana Spria scored the first goal for you guys tonight in the uh, second half. And he seems to have really come alive early on in the season. And usually we get to experience the what Diron does late in the season. He's obviously famous for that, but he's really contributing early on. What, would, what do you have to say kind of about his play early on this season for you guys? He has a belief. Um, he's matured. Um, he's scoring goals. And I think in the past, he has given some very good performances. But, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, 
some names get put in, in 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 some players, and it looks like it's the reality. But the the truth is that um, you know he's a very good player. He's an important player, and especially now he has matured. He has matured, and, and that is one of the differences uh, because uh, he takes care of himself in in a way to make sure that he's always available. He's playing. Uh, in a smart way, he's utilizing his uh, his attributes and, and his scoring goals, which for us is very important. All right, we'll go to Kyle Pinnell. Gio, you touched a little bit on just using a back five. Uh, and obviously, by doing that, you're taking away an attacker and, and having a, one more center back coverage. I'm just kind of curious, when doing something like that, and you mentioned like connecting between lines with something that was a second half adjustment, um, but what are some things you're looking for specifically in a, in a formation that maybe you haven't drilled as much? And, and what are you trying to learn from a game like this where you get to see the entire 90 minutes of back five and, and what the players have been capable of doing in that? I think when you are flexible uh, and, and you have players that can adapt to different things, you're stronger. You're stronger because you can accommodate to be able to make sure that you give to the game what the game needs from you. And especially when you need to make rotations and when you will have more players in some positions than others. So you need to be very creative and you need to make sure that the players understand and have the flexibility to be able to um, adapt to different systems. And uh, today we try something different with the three, four, three, or as I said before, four, two, three. Um, and we struggle towards the beginning to understand um, some areas to pressure, and especially keeping the ball. Um, but towards the end, we were able, as I mentioned before, to, to create some opportunities. But we felt that if we put uh, Diego Valeri, who was supposed to come a little bit later in the game, uh, in that rotation that we had in mind, we had the need to put Diego to utilize the spaces in the pockets uh, underneath. And having two forwards and the wing backs higher uh, allow us to be able to get in better positions. They had to defend a lot more. Our three. Uh, back players didn't have to defend as much uh, deep. Um, the, the job for them was a lot easier. Um, and they also had to be a little more brave to step outside to uh, the movements of Ruti um, and the two wingers, Pasher and, uh, um, and Fafa. So overall, uh, a very, very strong second half. And when you see that a team can adapt to these situations and, and understand how to come back in a game like this, because we have character. Um, it, it was very, very good to see from the players. All right, we'll go to Richard Farley. Coach, tonight, that sea of changes in the second half that you just alluded to that Valeri was supposed to be a part of, it really seemed to restore or sustain the energy that your team was carrying through that second half. And of course, that was something that was ever present last year until the last couple months of the season when people started to get injured. I wanted to get your thoughts on the importance of having something closer to your full roster together that allows you to make those changes in the second half that can either sustain or change the game. When we have every, everybody available, uh, then we have depth. And, and with depth, you can endure these uh, uh, stretches of games that you have to play which uh, is very demanding um, coming from playing against Sporting Kansas City, which was a, a very high level match uh, for the pace of the, of the game and coming here to the conditions that we had to come here. Um, we had to make sure that we make smart moves, but when you have uh, depth and, and guys are start coming back like Mabiala, Chara and, and others, um, then you can make rotations and, and those rotations will help you uh, maintain the level that you want in the game. And we saw it today, as you mentioned, when Chara came in, when Valeri came in, when Mabiala came in, um, you know, Van Rankin on the right side and, 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 and then Bali, you know, just to help us out in that moment that we have to be precautious with uh, Seba. Um, all around, uh, the guys did a, a phenomenal job to endure and, and be brave to believe that we could come back into this game. So I, I thought it was very good and, and I'm very optimistic seeing you know how the guys adapted so well to the, the system that we play today all right we'll take one final question from paul danzer hey Gio, i'm just curious if you ever scored a goal from a cross from a center back 
when you were playing. Can, can you repeat the question? Yeah. A goal from a... When you were playing, did you ever score a goal from a cross delivered by a center back like Bobby Ola did? <laughs> I, 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 I was fortunate to, to score a few goals, some from center backs. <laughs> But today, the cross, the quality of the cross that uh, Mabiala put in, it was uh, of a top level. Um, the way he went forward, got into the space, one, two, control, and from a different angle, put that cross in and, and then a great header. Always great crosses that result in goal also need a very good header in, in Jebo, you know, score a, a wonderful ball, a goal at, at a very important moment for him and for us.